Good morning. It's not morning, it's afternoon now. <laughs> um, so good afternoon, everybody. Um, to, uh, I'd like to start now. We're just gonna we're just gonna let our board member open us up, Tanya, and then we'll hand it over to you. But welcome. I'm glad you could make it. Thank you very much. Thanks. And welcome everybody else. And I'm going to turn the floor over to um, our lovely board member, Vanessa. Thank you, Kim. And thank you, everyone. It's good to see you all as much as I can. Um, welcome to today's Wellness Wednesday webinar, which is hosted by your First Nations Health Directors Association. I would like to acknowledge all of the traditional territories that we are all collectively gathering from today. I am currently coming to you from the unceded traditional territory of the Hubertista people on the Eswinis Reserve. Uh, my name is Vanessa Charlong. My traditional name is Kati Kiwitana. I am the health director here for the Hubertista First Nation, and I am the Nuchanu rep for the Vancouver Island on the Health Directors Association Board. I became a member of our association in September of 2012, and I have served on the board since September of 2014 as one of our three regional representatives here on the island. So I would like to take a few minutes just to offer a quick prayer. Um, I know we all pray a little differently, so I will try to make it short and sweet, asking the creator, Nas, to look over us, to guide our hearts and to guide our thoughts, to look over us and our families and to keep take care of those that are in need on the streets, addictions, facing chronic illnesses and everything else we have out there. And in acknowledgement of all of the losses many of us have been experiencing, I know a couple Recently, in one community up in the north, as recent as this morning, has touched us all. So I would like to take 20, 30 seconds moment of silence just to acknowledge the losses that all of us have been feeling in all of our communities. So let go. Thank you for that. So as health directors, we play an important role in the management and delivery of health services within community. And this includes administering the community health funding agreements provided by the First Nations Health Authority. Today's session will explore the roles, responsibilities and accountability within these funding arrangements in April, the funding arrangements team will be back to deliver two more webinars focusing on budgeting as well as terms and conditions. We are joined by the FNHA funding arrangement advisors who will share information about their role and provide a brief overview of the different types of health funding agreements. There will be an opportunity to ask questions following the presentation. So please type your questions into the question box, not the chat room, but the question box, please. I'm looking forward to learning more about this important topic. So I will hand it off to the funding arrangement teams. And if you could each please take a moment to tell you a little bit about yourself before we get started, or as you wish, depending on your presentation style. So thank you. Choo. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, so definitely happy to be here. Um, uh, first, just to introduce uh, myself. Uh, my name is uh, Tanya Duncan, and I'm the Director of Funding Arrangements uh, with FNHA, and I've been with FNHA for about a year, um, previous with Indigenous Services Canada. I'm also a First Nation uh, from Vancouver Island uh, as well, from the uh, Lake First Nation. Um, so I'm very happy to be here, and today we're just going to go over the health funding arrangements piece, but uh, uh, a little bit um, uh, before I get
to acknowledge um, I'm also kind of I'm in the office today because I had major technical issues today um, I had to run into the office but um, I'm usually technically working from remotely from home uh, on the Coast Salish land so um, definitely welcome to be here um, and Michael's going to be sharing my screen because I couldn't get in today um, so Michael did you start sharing Okay, thanks. So uh, today we're just going to go over the health funding arrangements um, and um, how we can support communities in the delivery of your health funding and agreement with the, within, health, within the First Nations Health Authority. Um, moving on to the next slide. Um, just for our agenda today. Um, going to be looking at um, uh, today. We're going to be looking at the accountabilities, but I'm just going to do a short intro um, to some intro pieces into that. But uh, as um, Renessa mentioned, we have a three part series um, webinar series that we're going to be doing accountability, um, budgeting, and terms and conditions. So, those kind of the three that uh, are going to be moving into our webinar. And going on to the next piece um, is kind of who we are um, within funding arrangements. So within the funding arrangements advisory team, um, I have two teams. I have the community arrangements, uh, which uh, most of you probably are dealing with uh, implementing your health funding agreements um, and some agreements, which are you know the three agreements that you're familiar with are set, flex, and block. And then I have the partnerships team um, that are dealing with the um, uh, treatment care centers, um, anything to do with provincial envelope um, jet project board um, projects that you may have. So moving on to the next slide, and that kind of shows our faces. Uh, there you see uh, the management team that I have. So uh, me there as the director. Um, and then I have um, Michael and Calvin, and I'm wondering if you can just kind of quickly do an introduction, uh, both Michael and Calvin. Hi, Tanya. It's Karen here. Your audio is really um, scratchy, so we're wondering if you can call in instead, and then you would have to mute your laptop. Okay, I will call in. Um, but Michael and uh, Calvin, can you do your introductions? Perfect, thank you. Yep. I'll do. Okay, um, I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, all. My name is Michael Rupison. I'm the manager for community funding arrangements. I have been um, with First Nations Health Authority since this since the transfer, and. Um, I have been, uh, I came from Health Canada. Uh, I was the former program manager for the Aboriginal Head Start on Reserve program and have been uh, working with First Nations community since 2007. Um, uh, a number of you may have already, uh, you know, we may have already uh, engaged in some sort of discussion but looking forward for additional discussions uh, with all the health directors. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelvin Vanesh. I am uh, the manager of partnership arrangements, um, reporting to Tanya Duncan. I've been in this role now for just about two months. And prior to that, I was with Indigenous Services Canada for about three and a half years. And then prior to that, I was with the First Nations Health Authority for two years in health benefits. So I look forward to this presentation. I look forward to working with Tanya and Michael, and I look forward to working with all of you over the months and the years ahead. Thanks. Thank you, Kelly and Michael. Uh, I just tried to dial in. I'm going to try and dial in again. Um, the number I had on the thing it said it wasn't uh, working. Um, so more technical issues for me. <laughs> um, can everybody hear me okay? It's just, um, sorry, it's Karen. Um, it's just really scratchy. 
So we are recording this. Um, I sent you the number in chat again, so maybe try that number one eight hundred. I'll that number again. Um, time, maybe on the next slide. Michael, can you introduce the next slide and have the FA introduction? Do the introduction. Will do. Thank you. So uh, to continue on our presentations, uh, we have said we are, we do have uh, two advisory teams community funding arrangements and partnership agreements. So uh, we would like to say, uh, we would like to introduce the RT members. We have Joanna Trowell. She is a funding advisor for the Northern region. Uh, and we also have Dan Julian assisting or also for the Northern region and also upcoming Head Start program uh, advisor or Funding advisor, not just a head start advisor, but a health. He will take lead of the, all the head start pro projects as of February. We have Bonnie Labonte for the interior region. We have Lana Leon, uh, who is for the Van Vancouver coastal region and Fraser Salish. She, she is on leave at this moment. But and we have Toby Pascal acting on behalf of Lana for the Vancouver Coastal Region and Fraser Salish Region. We all have um, Audrey Henry for the Vancouver Island Region. And lastly, Tina Manson, who provides support for this, all the set funding agreements and the Jordan's principle. Um, Kelvin, would you like to introduce your team, please? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, you can hear me? Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks, Michael. So we are at this time a small team of four, but truly dedicated and very competent advisors. Uh, we have Don Lee, uh, who handles the Indian Residential School, uh, the NADAP treatment and non-community based projects. Uh, Iana, who handles the Joint Project Board as um, along with Anita, they both work on the, G the JPB portfolio. But um, Yana also works on the provincial envelope and the health actions. And then Anita also shares that uh, duty and responsibility. And I think that all three of them are on the call today. And Anita will actually be uh, presenting on some of the information as well. And then of course, there's me, the newest member of the team. And at this point, I'm, I'm learning as much from my team as I am contributing to, to them. But uh, we're, we're doing very well. And again, I, I look forward to this, to this presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, just to continue on uh, the presentation, I'll take over until our director, Tanya Duncan, is able to um, uh, is able to provide uh, or is able to connect herself into the presentation. So um, who do we support or how do we support uh, communities? The community funding arrangements team works in partnership with the health directors, health leads. We also provide, um, you know, engagement with your community leadership. We provide support to funding arrangement management. We provide support to work and coordinate with the community development team for the development of the community health and wellness development plan, uh, development plans. And we liaise with FNHA program specialists, both from the regions and at the provincial level. Your health funding arrangement is, a, is a unique. It is, very, it is specific to your community or organization. It has been developed by our funding arrangement development development team and has been tailored to your specific model of funding and funding you receive. Everything you need to know about your agreement can be found in your health funding agreement or arrangement and all of its attached schedules. When your community receives the agreement, it is important to read through all, all, all of the terms and conditions to fully understand what is written prior to signing of your agreement.
we also would like to uh, provide some reminder in terms of our, uh, of COVID-19. Uh, so there is, we are supporting preparedness planning, but we are trying to provide communicable disease emergency development as part of your community health and wellness plan. So there is still ongoing support for PPE and infection prevention control. And there is also still some ongoing support for isolation uh, for individuals and for the communities. Again, this is over and above uh, the work that we're doing in terms of vaccine distribution also. For any questions or inquiries about COVID-19, please direct them to the email below, covid19needs at fnha.ca. As we have mentioned earlier, we this is a three-part series of sessions. Our session for today will, will touch on accountability. We are looking at having to provide uh, you know, reminders and guide on the accountabilities and what does accountability mean in the, in, in the delivery of your health funding agreement. We ask, are you aware of all the reporting requirements within your agreement? Reporting to FHA and to your membership. Second session will be uh, budgeting that will be on, scheduled on April 7, and terms and conditions that will be for April 21. Um, thank you. So. I'll turn over the presentation now to uh, our next panel, uh, who will be uh, presenting about accountability. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Joanne Luttrell, and I'm the Funding Arrangements Advisor for the North. And um, I will be sharing this presentation with two of my colleagues and they'll introduce themselves in a few minutes. But I'm the, um, I've been working at, sorry, I'm not sure what happened here. Um, but anyways, I've been working at First Nations Health Authority for about four years and I'm a Squamish Nation member. Uh, my ancestral name is Laat Tanat. And I really look forward to this presentation today. So with that, I'll turn it over to my colleague, Anita, to introduce herself. Thank you. Thanks, Joanne. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Anita Finney. Um, I've been with FNHA for almost 12 years now. So I was part of the First Nations Interim Health Society for blah, 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 First Nations Health Authority. Um, I originally worked as a contracts administrator for about six years, and then I went on to the drinking water area as a drinking water officer. And then I worked a little bit with the Vancouver Coastal Regional Team as a project developer. Some of you may know me from there. And now I'm blessed to work with the funding arrangements team as a partnership arrangements advisor. So as Michael had mentioned, um, I work on the Joint Project Board projects, uh, the Health Actions and Provincial Envelope with Yana. Um, I come from Hacklip, which is just outside of Lillooet, BC. And I'm really grateful to be here today and grateful to the land that I walk on um, with Squamish, Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh Youth, and also for the opportunity to have this um, information and sharing session with you guys. Um, it was really a, a learning experience for me as well, coming from the partnership arrangements side and learning everything that the uh, community arrangements team does and work with the health directors across the region. Thank you. And I'm going to turn it over to Dan now. Thanks. Dan, you're muted. <laughs> Dan.
Dan? Sorry about that. I called in. I'm not sure what's going on here. Sorry about that. Thank you, uh, Anita. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Julian, and my traditional name is Kushinit. I am a member of Maskey First Nation, but I'm calling in from the unceded territories of Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nation. I have been with SNHA since May 2017, uh, where I started off in health benefits as a medical team lead, but I've been an advisor in the funding arrangements team since December of 2019. I am grateful to be here today and looking forward to today's discussion on accountability. Uh, we have some housekeeping items due to the time limitations. We ask for questions to be at the end of the uh, presentation, so please note any questions uh, you may have. Uh, if we run out of time, please let us know your questions, and we will provide a written response to all uh, and send it to all the re uh, recipients. And I'll hand it back to Anita. Thank you. Actually, it's to me, Dan. If we could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, my name is Joanne. And uh, so we're looking at the accountability to community members. So do you share the information with the community regarding plans, budgets, and reporting? Uh, we also refer you to, the, to our website for the Community Health and Wellness Toolkit. Um, if, you, if you don't know where to locate that, um, just send, we'll send out the information in a resource list at a later date. But we look at the principles of transparency and disclosure. So how is FNHA and communities accountable? We look at the Community Health and Wellness Plan FNHA provides supports to communities to complete their health plans through FNHA's community development team. Communities are to submit and update their health plan every five years, which also includes the evaluation plan and report. Community involvement, um, such as workshops, focus groups, surveys, etc. Reporting on time. Being fisc fiscally responsible, ensuring all financial information is submitted to FNHA on time, and FNHA ensuring that all reconciliations and surplus reinvestment plans, if applicable, are reviewed and feedback is provided to communities in a timely manner. Role modeling and the excellence of delivery of health programs and services. Provide information relating to the agreement to any members on request, it includes reporting, plans, etc., through newsletters, meetings, various communication. Your members are equally a part of this agreement, so there should be accountabilities in place. For example, annual meetings to report back to the community. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Accountability to FNHA is to provide programs and services as to the terms and conditions of your health funding arrangement. You can find the funding FNHA reporting requirements guide on our website. This is a good resource to use in completing your report. Submission of reporting, please refer to the reporting requirements guide. Some of the reports that are required are the annual narrative, the annual audit or year end financials, interim financial report for set funding, program reports, for example, empty logs, drinking water, et cetera surplus reinvestment plan, and evaluation reports. Evaluation reports only applies to block agreements. And we refer you to the Community Health and Wellness Toolkit in regards to the evaluation report. 
Next slide, please. So we look at the, we've developed a um, cheat sheet, which is a real quick reference that you can use for looking at when reports are due and the kind of reports that are due. So we look at the first one, which is October 15th, and it's for the quarter one medical transportation reports, which is for the period April to August. We need interim financial report and medical transportation logs. On November 15th, we need the interim financial report, which is for the period April to September for set programs. For on January 15th, we need the Q2 medical transportation reports for the period September to November for the interim financial report and the medical transportation logs. On July 29th, all the annual reports that are due are the annual narrative report, annual audit report, year end financials, Q3 December to March for the MT logs, accreditation services report if applicable, immunization report if applicable, surplus reinvestment plans if applicable, biweekly COHI report, dental services daily record, monthly drink and water sampling reports, including any incident reports, which goes to the environmental health officer. An evaluation report, which only applies to block agreements. And these evaluation reports are due every five years. And um, reference can be made to the health plan when completing the evaluation report. Thank you. I'll turn it over to my colleague, Anita. Thanks. Thanks, Joanne. I was on mute. I'm a, I'm a mute handler. I like talking in mute. Um, yes, absolutely. You can get a copy of the cheat sheet. So we're just on the annual financial reports page now. And as Joanne had mentioned, the annual financial reports are due July 29th of each fiscal year. And as you can see on the left-hand side there, that's a, a sample of the program schedule. So the annual audit financial statements includes the following, and this is specific for the flex and block agreement holders out there. Um, it's the auditor's reports, the statement of financial position, which is also a balance sheet, a statement of operations, which is an income statement, a statement of changes in net financial assets, a statement of cash flow, notes to the financial statements and program schedules, which are unaudited. So the year end financial statements, which are also unaudited, these are for the set agreement holders only that are submitted on the July the 29th of each fiscal year as well. So um, it's understood that year end audited financial statements can be done internally within the band administration. Um, it's important that the community's finance department engages with their health leads, which can include the executive director, social worker, band manager, et cetera. And we suggest that communities have ongoing meetings with their finance team to ensure the financial situation within their health center band office is appropriate. Once FNHA receives these financial reports, they are forwarded to our internal teams for review and reconciliation. That draft reconciliation is completed. Our funding arrangements advisors will contact the community for their approval and comments. So there may be further follow up with the surplus reinvestment plan, which I'll talk about shortly. So the next slide will discuss how the funding model structure and program schedules support the financial report breakdown. So we'll just go to the next slide here and how the funding model structure and how the program schedules really weave each of those program schedules in 
is really, really does sup support that the reconciliation that's done internally within FNHA and how it really works to support the communities and projects th throughout the province. So when we look at on the uh, left hand side there, you can see that there's, I'm, I'm going to actually get, oh, Van, you're so awesome. You can see the sub sub activity level that's on the bottom, like on the left hand side there. So it's important that the program schedules be included in with the annual audited financial report as it it saves time on the internal reconciliation completed by FNHA. The schedules uh, may answer some questions that arise from the agreement reconciliation. So you want to ensure that all programs are separated from each activity. So an example um, is under healthy living, which is in the sub sub activity. You can reallocate from chronic disease prevention and management to injury prevention. So you can see like under healthy living there, chronic disease prevention to injury prevention there. So if you'd like a copy of this as well, you can you can do a request in the Q&A as well. So we're gonna go to the surplus reinvestment plan. So SRPs are required if a community that has a surplus of more than $1,000 in their set program funding only. So this is except for health benefits. SRPs are not required for flexible or block program funding. So if an SRP is required, the funding arrangements team will send the form to the recipient. It will be used as a communication tool to determine service utilization. So how this all works. FNHA will determine any surpluses for set programs. And it's used for set program surplus funds only. The recipient fills out the SRP form based on their program plan. FNHA program specialists and leads review the submission and recommend or not recommend it for approval. If the SRP is not recommended for approval, it will be reviewed again with the community. The approved SRP is sent to the director of funding arrangements for approval. Once the SRP is approved and signed, a call is back to the community along with an agreement reconciliation letter. The program plan should be referred to when completing the SRP form. So if you ever need assistance with your SRP, please contact our funding arrangements team at any time. So our next slide is going to talk about the annual narrative report. The annual narrative report outlines the program services and activities undertaken during the fiscal year and again is due July the 29th of each year, as Joanne mentioned, and is based on the community health and wellness plan and program plans from the community. The narrative report should contain the following information. Summary of health programs and services delivered, including core programs. Data on service operations and results, and an explanation for any deviations from the community health and wellness plan. So highlight successes and challenges. You want to provide highlights of your program activities for the year, any changes in operations, staffing, so that would include numbers, training, successes, and challenges, participation in program, successes and challenges, community events, although we know that that will probably change this fiscal year, so but that may also include health fairs, etc. cetera, uh, collaboration between programs, and any additional information you want to include. And yes, we do love pictures. So I did see in the chat there that what we do funding arrangements was sent out. So health directors create the narrative. However, you can use your staff to assist you with creating this narrative report. This can potentially be a way for your staff to report and provide updates on a consistent basis. Once the community has completed the annual narrative report and submitted to FNHA reports email, the funding arrangements advisor provides acknowledgement to the community that the report was received and also reviews the narrative submission. The funding arrangements team is currently working on a narrative template and guide and hope 
to have this to our communities by the end of the fiscal year, March 31. Thanks, guys. I'm actually going to turn it over to Dan Julian now. And thanks for listening. Dan, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Thanks. Sorry about that. Sorry, uh, we will go over some scenario questions. So if we can collaborate on the questions. Uh, based on the exercise, we covered some important topics in the presentation about what should be covered in an annual narrative report. So what are some key points to be covered in an annual narrative report? We just ask that some of the participants could share some of their ideas on the narrative reporting. Yeah. Yes, we're asking the participants if they could share some of their um, ideas, please. So another great question would be about this question is like, how do you compile all necessary information for your annual narrative report? Sure, Judy. Well, I'll jump in quickly. Um, here in Nuchanu's territory, we have what's called the Nuchanu's Tribal Council. They are our flow through um, agency. So a lot of our agreements are tied up with them. So actually I'm learning a lot because we don't necessarily deal with them in the same way. The NTC will come and engage with us about what we did within community and then they will roll up all 14 or whichever reports they have. I know some people are in buyback situations with them. And then they send it off to FNHA on our behalf. So that's how it's done in our territory. So um, it's interesting learning that there are so many different methods out there. Thank you. Yeah, that's great, Vanessa, thank you. So some great uh, ways to compile unnecessary uh, information for this. Uh, some ideas can be keeping track of events and participants, uh, online tracking systems, such as Facebook or any internal online system, uh, online tracking system uh, from any types of meeting minutes within your community. Um, so if anyone doesn't have any other comments or feedback about this question, I can move on to the answers. Dan? They can't, they, they're not, they're, everyone is on mute. Yeah, they, they don't have um, speaking. I'm not sure if they can speak or not. Okay, yeah, I'm in presentation mode, so I can't see anything. Yeah. All right, no. sorry, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good to note. So I'll just maybe go over the answers then. How about that? Sorry about that. So answers to number one, uh, mandatory programs, uh, home and community care, communicable disease, which is nursing, uh, environmental health protection, which is drinking water, uh, set flex block programs, uh, which conclude uh, nursing, immunization, drinking water, et cetera. Uh, community health and wellness plans, which would include evaluation plans, and you can also connect with the community development team. Uh, program plans, the remoteness of a community. Uh, activities such as health fairs, diabetes, 
workshops, et cetera. Uh, inc it could include the number of participants, any challenges and successes, uh, organizational charts, which could include uh, titles and number of staff, vacant positions, qualifications, training. Uh, we would also love to see any picture or media and any issues related to COVID-19 and delivery of services. So we'll move on to question number two. So when are the due dates for the health funding? Oh, sorry, Dan. I'm not sure if Michael wanted to say something because there's something in the, um, saying something about Karen and Michael wanted to say something, I believe. Okay, so, yeah, sorry. No, Joanne, no, 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 go ahead, please. No, sorry. And it says something about Karen. Okay, no, I'll take care of the Q&A. Thank you. Okay, okay. Um, in our presentation, we provided uh, information about re reporting requirements and their due dates. Uh, the types of report, reporting and due dates are included in the health funding agreements. So I'll just uh, actually just move on to the answers. So the answers to that uh, could be the quarterly reports for medical transportation, which would include financial reports and monthly logs that are due October 15th and January 15th of every year, bi-weekly COHI reports, uh, monthly drinking water sample reports, annual native report, annual audit report, for year-end financial reports, uh, immunization reports, and these are also due July 29th of every year. Surplus reinvestment plans are due after agreements reconciliation, which is usually within 120 days after we receive the annual audit for year-end financials. Uh, it could also determine where you're at with your reporting and can also uh, determine how FNHA can better support you with your reporting. So I'm not sure if anyone has anything to add to that. Dan, someone asked what is COHI? Uh, COHI is Child Oral Health Initiative, and that would be a health benefit. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. So we'll, we'll just uh, move on to question number three. Um, where can you find the due dates in your health funding agreement? So we can go to the next question, Dan. Okay. So next question is, um, so we have touched on some reporting earlier, but some examples of the reporting uh, would be medical transportation logs, financial reports, narrative reports, et cetera. So why is it important to submit all reporting by the due date? I'm not sure if anyone that has anything to add to that, or I can just read the answers. So the answers to number four, um, it is part of your agreement and obligation as part of your terms and conditions of your health funding agreement. In addition, as part of FNHA's reciprocal accountabilities, uh, when communities provide their reporting requirements, uh, this feeds into FNHA's possible funding considerations to communities' health priorities. And it may also assist FNHA in consideration of other funding sources 
for enhancing programs and services or new programs and services throughout the province. We'll move on to question number five. Um, can you please provide some examples of how you are accountable to community members? Uh, an example could be how you how do you communicate with your community members? So in what ways are you accountable to your community members? So the answer is to number five, uh, your members are equally a part of this agreement, so there should be accountabilities in place. So examples for that could be annual, annual meetings to report back to the community or any meetings or Zoom meetings, newsletters, surveys, community gatherings when allowed, uh, Facebook, emails, telephone calls, annual report, online annual general meetings or home visits when allowed. I'm not sure if anything, anyone has anything to add to that. But that, that concludes the end of our presentation. And I can see that there's a lot of that there's some questions that are going around in the Q&A section and that's awesome. So I hope you all found this really informative. And I'm going to pass it back I'm wondering how we can if every everyone oh <laughs> yes I can start my video <laughs> if our, if anyone who wants information from this PowerPoint presentation or wants a copy of it if they can just put their information in to the Q&A or chat and we can send that information off. Hi everyone, it's Kim from FNHDA here. Um, things, um, apologies to the funding arrangements team. We hadn't, um, quite realized how how many questions you were going to have for our attendees. So for the health directors on the line, thank you so much for um, participating in the chat and in the Q&A. And funding arrangements is um, coming back in April to do um, a couple of more webinars on other aspects. And we will set those up um, differently so that um, we can make it a little bit more interactive and your voices um, can be heard. So apologies to all of you for that. Um, and yes, definitely we will collect up um, the resources and whatever information funding arrangements um, has for you all. And we will send that out to um, every, all of the attendees who are on the, on the line today and make it part of our package moving forward. So thanks. For, oh, sorry, perfect. I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> Um, sorry to interrupt. There was one question in the chat box and the questions from um, Judy uh, asking about the HMU for it to be separate from other programs on, I believe, the reporting form. It is requested that the medication HMU be situated separately on the schedule and not together with another program. 
was, I think, the actual question, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it's Michael Rupison here. Uh, try, I, I was trying to get a, a, a bit more information. Um, the presentation of uh, the funding per, is by program, but in a block funding agreement, which uh, Judy has, there is the capacity to integrate the different programs in, in their service delivery. But one thing that we have to give emphasis, any set funding program or a program that is funded under the set funding modality of your agreement has to be reported separately and not lumped in into, your, uh, into the other program. So that's where uh, I think that's where the confusion or that's where the question is directed. So yes, uh, in terms of the financials uh, that we are, uh, you know, that we're asking HMU or all the health benefit funded programs are always in set. So we require individual program schedules when you're funded. Uh, under, by any of the programs. So hopefully I was able to uh, respond to that correctly. And if not, uh, Judy, we can take it uh, offline. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. I appreciate that. No, no problem, man. Sorry, can you hear me? I'm sorry, go ahead, Judy. Oh, okay, I just wanna say thank you. I finally, I got access here. So now I'm, I could talk for the whole rest of the time if you want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just wanna thank you guys for your presentation. It was wonderful. I missed a little bit at the front end and I did add my um, emails to, to get the PowerPoint so I can kind of do a catch up, but I, it's really interesting. I'm hoping that we can do deeper dives um, later on because um, more into um, you know the narrative, or not the narrative, but the audit stuff that's required um, by FNHA. So it's a little bit confusing for our financial people who are sending everything but the kitchen sink to you guys. <laughs> I'm sure you don't want it. <laughs> uh, uh, no worry, ma'am. Uh, just in case there's any confusion or, or is there any um, how to say um, inquiries or questions uh, or unsurety in terms of your reporting, please reach out to the funding advisors. And um, as we have said, uh, we will share um, who the funding, uh, th this PowerPoint, and it will point out um, who the funding advisor is. And you can also direct your uh, questions to myself Kelvin and our director, Tanya Duncan. Thank you. Uh, can I ask a question? Hello? Yes. Um, so, hi, Anita. Lovely to see you. Oh, my God. It's so nice to hear your voice. Thank you. Um, my question is in terms of sharing with the community, is there, you know, when we send in our annual report, can we just, um, after, you know, can we just send a copy of that to the community? Like just have like a Zoom, like a budget meeting and say, here's our annual report we sent in to FNHA and can we do it that way? Because we have many meetings with them all throughout the years and they see all of our um, people, all of our departments working all throughout the year. So can we just share the annual report with them? That's it, that's my question. I do know that some of the, some of the communities do provide it through the, through the AGM and the annual report. Yes, I, I don't really see a problem with sharing it with the community. Um, it's, it is an annual narrative that covers all of the funding and the programs 
that happened in the delivery of the services. So it should be fine to share it with the community. Wonderful, um, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Um, just like a follow up to this, I. Um, part of the block funding health uh, terms con and conditions of block funding agreement, because there is provisions there that uh, a report has to be submitted to your community members. And again, even if you're not in a block funding agreement, you can practice this. And this is like a good practice of transparency of services. Thank you. And just for our viewers out there, I'm not sure if everyone noticed, it was uh, noted in the Q&A that you have now been unmuted. So in a, an orderly fashion, you are welcome to make comments now and are able to unmute yourself. If I could suggest they raise their hand and we could, um, and then we'll uh, take it that way. Thank you, Karen. Go ahead, Judy. I waited for everybody to respond and I just didn't want you guys to be sitting there twiddling your thumbs. <laughs> just thank you again. This has really, really been clarifying. My question is um, regarding uh, the year end uh, schedules that we share. Um, I know that uh, there's a number of documents that um, need to go to um, FINA to meet that, um, that requirement. But when I look at um, the list of documents that will need to come from um, our financial piece uh, to meet that obligation, um, the uh, accountant, um, for some reason, does not understand what you're asking for. <laughs> Is that... Uh, is it possible to look at these checklists and um, put them in a in a different format for the uh, year end piece that's in July for the financial and the audit piece? You know, I do, I do know for your community that you have funding separate from your HFAs. So I think that might be a reason why there's a little bit of confusion with your with the finance team when they're doing the audit. So separate from that one sheet that shows the blocks, the, the different types of funding modalities in your HFA. And then, yeah, I, I see what I see what the issue may be with with you with your accountant. Is that is that what you're talking about? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that clarity, Anita. Yes, definitely. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> I hear his struggle. <laughs> so um, it's it's always been it's been a suggestion previously that when you receive a, a separate funding amount separate from your HFA, it gets a different code from the finance team. So from the finance team in within your community, it doesn't get put into any of your HFA. Funding, funding structure so that when you're when the accountant does the program schedules at the end of the fiscal year they can absolutely differentiate between the HFA funding and your other grant funding from you know even if it's from say MCFD or somebody else like that that they that there's that absolute definition where all the funding is coming from and it just has to do with 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 the coding that's done in the in the background. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, I think I'm getting you. Yeah. Yeah. So generally that's just a 
conversation. Um, Bonnie is the interior, interior Bonnie LeBounty. She's the interior community arrangements advisor. So th that would be a great conversation to have with her and she could support you with that. And Michael as well. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <He's> like, uh, <laughs> no. I I was uh, I just want to answer a question uh, that was like part of the Q and A. If we if is is there a summary of um of reporting? Yes. Uh, the problem is like we have to individually look at your agreement because again that's what we have said all there is uniqueness in all the health funding arrangements. So if you want to have a summary of, uh, of your reporting, I would suggest reaching out to your FA advisor, have a discussion so that you know uh, they can uh, provide you that summary. And hopefully in, in the long term, when we do a bit more transformation in our agreements, that uh, we can generate automatically all the reporting requirements for your community and inclusive of dates and deadlines. So that's one of the visions that we are looking at right now. So again, uh, right now, we ask that you do one-on-ones with your FA advisors and you know request for a summary of all the reports. Thank you. Yeah, the discussion can also be an email, Judy. So sorry, my <laughs> as part of your <laughs> the Q and A. Yes, you know what I what I meant. It was like engaging your FA through emails, discussions, meetings, or even virtual discussions. So thank you. So. Is there any other questions or? I don't see any more hands up or questions in the chat box. So we'll do a final a final call for that. And then um, does your team have any concluding comments, Michael? Or do we then hand it back to um, our illustrious board member co-host to close us out? <laughs> yeah, I, I think we can uh, close. Thank you. Yeah, I just I just wanted to add something. Um, I just wanted to say that it, I really feel good about doing this presentation and also to let um, the region, the North region communities know that we can do an FA 101 and that um, we can, you can send me an email or give me a phone call if you have any questions or concerns about anything. But I'd just like to say thank you for uh, participating. Thank you. So seeing no one else jumping to um, <laughs> comment, I know, I think we're all a little zoomed out. So uh, ending early, I don't think anyone's going to um, hold anything against us for that. So just a few takeaways, I think, um, that I was able to glean from your presentation. You're eager to work in partnerships with us and our health directors and our communities. Us as health directors need to read our funding agreements and know what's in there. You also have supports for communicable disease emergencies outside of COVID. We need to visit the website, although it was noticed that it's currently being updated, so please bear Bear with them as that process is happening. 
the communities need to be aware of updating your health plans every five years. So knowing where you are on that rotation, whether you're three years in or only one year in, um, so you know when your five years is up. We know that the end of July is gonna be very busy for reporting. And I think the two main things are noting the diversity that we have across the province within our funding agreements and the need for us to be able to report on time to keep that funding going and to identify those areas uh, that we can target that we haven't hit yet. So on behalf of our FNHDA, I'd like to extend our thanks to the funding arrangement teams for taking the time to present today. I'd also like to thank all of our participation. We hope that you will join us on March 10th for our next Wellness Wednesday webinar. Daniel Saranac will be pre presenting on personal power and energetic sovereignty. And if I mispronounced her name, please correct me and, and, my, and my apologies. So until then, enjoy the rest of your day, stay safe and stay well. Chu. Thank you, Vanessa. <sighs> You're Thanks welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again. I'm sure it's yeah. awesome.